The MCU has made a lot of mistakes over the past few years. Too many new characters, watering down the product, and an overall lack of focus. Now, I do think they are about to bounce back in a huge way with Deadpool 3, the X-Men, and a focus on quality over quantity. But one thing I think they screwed up beyond repair are their cosmic stories. Welcome back, Screen Crush. I'm Ryan Airy, and I'm going to explain how the MCU squandered a vast space opera. But I'm also going to outline how they could have told those stories better and tell you a way forward post-Avengers Secret Wars. Because ultimately, guys, I love the MCU, and I think that that they have the potential to tell a story on the scale of Star Wars. And that's why we designed these Marvel Cosmic Parody shirts at our merch store, ScreenCrushMerch.com, where we design the merch ourselves. We have this Higher, Further, Faster shirt, and these are the actual cats of the Screen Crush team. That's my Artemis right there and Apollo. We also have Douglas Flurkin, Hannibal Flurkin, the Variant Hoodies, and many more. Shopping our merch store is the best way for you to directly support our channel, and we have a blast making these shirts. And also, right now, you can get tickets to our very first live show in Brooklyn, New York on February 22nd. Tickets are almost sold out, and the link is below. So Marvel Cosmic Stories in the comics tell a huge ongoing story, a struggle between various empires and gladiators, heroes, despots, and terrorists. But in the MCU, this grand cosmic opera is just a mess. What do you mean by that? Well, the MCU is at its best when it plays out like character-driven stories, you know, over a longer epic narrative. For instance, the Infinity Saga had a pretty clear line. We have our core characters, Thor, Tony, and Steve. They form the Avengers, create Ultron, which causes the team to split up in Civil War, which allowed Thanos to win the stones, cause the snap which caused the Avengers to reform. And all along the way, the character motivations of Tony and Steve broke apart the Avengers against this larger backdrop of Thanos slowly gathering the Infinity Stones. It was perfect. Perfect. Everything. Down to the last minute details. You have to hit a balance between like personal story stakes and large scale plot stakes. The MCU cosmic stories never had that big backdrop plan. Everything's been thrown together and added piecemeal, movie by movie, show by show, and sometimes at the very last minute. What do you mean? Well, like, look, in the comics, there's like various empires out in space. You have the Kree, the Skrull, the Shi'ar, the Phalanx, and like tons more. And at various times, Earth has become involved in these conflicts, giving the reader a reason to care who wins some space war between non-human species. For instance, the Kree and the Skrulls were at war for hundreds of years, and the conflict eventually involve the Avengers, and that story led to the comic book Secret Invasion, a grand space opera told over decades. But the MCU has lacked any kind of unified plan on how to adapt these cosmic stories. Instead, they've hinted at these galactic stories without ever really exploring them. Various projects have shown us a galactic power struggle, only for the next movie to reverse that struggle, and then this results in changing character motivations radically from movie to movie just to suit the needs of whatever story happened to be next. So, instead of the MCU telling like a long space opera about the Kree and the Skrull, that had real character stakes for our heroes, all those events just play out in the background, kind of between movies, and then we hear about them later. I mean, think about it. A lot of huge cosmic events have just been described afterwards in dialogue. The million of us that were left, we fled. The things that are happening on Earth are happening everywhere. So you might not see me for a long time. Corners of the universe consider him God. And you're a free, a race of noble warriors. Heroes. There was people that needed me. What do I find with the nine realms completely in chaos? I'm so sorry. I have to deal with this. I have to go home. Oh, no. Oh, no. Jeez, what's wrong with you? I lost my job. I was knew oh, you were a That's a bummer, man. I'm really sorry to hear that. Well, I went out to celebrate, you know, fun employment, big night, lots of drinks. Now I feel thin, like butter spread over too much bread. Yeah, man, I too have had a lot of rough mornings, especially after a big night out. Not anymore though, because now I use Zbiotics, our partner for this video. Zbiotics is a pre-alcohol probiotic that's actually the world's first genetically engineered probiotic. It was invented by PhD scientists to tackle rough mornings after drinking. And I gotta tell you guys, Zbiotics really works. I have a regular subscription that brings it to my house every single month. This is holy nectar in my household. So here's how it works. When you drink, alcohol gets converted into a toxic byproduct Product in the gut. Now, it is this byproduct and not dehydration that is to blame for your rough next day. And Zbiotics produces an enzyme to break this byproduct down. It is designed to work like your liver, but in your stomach where you need it the most. So, you take Zbiotics before you start drinking, and of course, drink responsibly and get a good night's sleep. And look, I'm not kidding about this. When I go to a party, I like pass Zbiotics around to people beforehand just so we're all having a good day the next morning. So, give your friends and yourself the gift of a better tomorrow with Zbiotics. Go to zbiotics.com/screencrush 
or scan the QR code on screen right now to get 15% off your first order when you use the code Screen Crush at checkout. Zbiotics is backed with a 100% money back guarantee. So if you are unsatisfied for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember, head to zbiotics.com slash screen crush and use the code Screen Crush at checkout for 15% off. Thanks Zbiotic for sponsoring this video. Back to what I was saying. So I still don't get what you're saying about the MCU messing up their cosmic stories. All right, then well, let me recap the history of the cosmic MCU and then you'll see what I mean about where they went wrong. The first cosmic story was Thor, but they wisely kept it centered on Earth, you know, to kind of ground us in our reality. But you get a good feel for the power dynamics out in space. Odin oversees the other realm, but he wants peace with them, but there's like some political tension there. And then obviously we had the Avengers, which again, hinted at a larger cosmic story, but the invading army was kept vague on purpose so they could have Thanos as a big reveal. And also, that's a story just about how the Avengers deal with this alien threat. And it makes the fight more manic and confusing if they and the audience have no idea what the hell is happening out in outer space. What the hell's going on? I mean, what the hell is going on? And then in Thor The Dark World, we see Thor putting down a rebellion on Spartal, Spartalheim, Spartalheim. And then we hear that there's been problems since the Bifrost was destroyed. When the Bifrost was destroyed, the Nine Realms erupted into chaos. Wars were raging, marauders were pillaging. But then those problems are forgotten after the first scene so Thor can return to Earth. And that's actually the biggest mistake that movie made, keeping it grounded on Earth when it should have been about Asgard putting down a rebellion from Malekith, like when the Dark Elves tried to conquer the Nine Realms. You know, like in the comics. So our first really big story in the galactic side of things was the Guardians of the Galaxy. So Nicole Perlman and James Gunn didn't want there to be a big galactic conflict in this story. They wanted to keep this small and personal. So they made this about one rogue Kree who had broken from his empire. And this was left vague enough for the other creators to tell a story about the Kree, you know, if they wanted to down the line. Again, there was no overall plan here. They were just like letting creators tell the story they wanted to tell, which is great, but there's problems with it that I'll talk about later. But in this movie, we also hear that Xandar and the Kree have been at war for a hundred years. Now that sounds like a pretty interesting story to tell, but we just hear about it on the news. The riots broke out across the Kree Empire today, protesting the recent peace treaty signed by the Kree Emperor. And then in Guardians 2, we learn a bit more about the Ravagers, space pirates with hearts of gold. And it seems like they would have really benefited from these endless wars in the galaxy that caused a breakdown of law and order. But again, we never see that or hear about it. Again, the Guardians franchise is focused on telling personal stories and there's nothing wrong with that. But it's just an example of how elements of this wider story are hinted at, but then ignored to focus on the more immediate character driven story. Like Thor Ragnarok, my favorite MCU movie, also told us that the Nine Realms were in chaos. What do I find with the Nine Realms? Realms completely in chaos. But we don't actually see that chaos happening. Again, that was not the personal story that this movie wanted to tell. But like we've had two movies where the Nine Realms were supposedly in chaos and that never features into these wider stories at all. And then in Avengers Infinity War, we finally get to see this army of zealots that Thanos commands, which were hinted at in several movies. See, everything in the cosmic story so far has only had one consistent element, Thanos, because this is his saga fine, but it all starts to get too complicated with Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel was handicapped from the beginning because it got a release date in between Infinity War and Endgame. So they either had to tell the story during the blip or they make it a flashback story, which you know what was fine. I love the interplay between Carol and Young Fury. Fantastic. Congratulations, Agent Fury. You have finally asked a relevant question. Oh, congratulations to you, Star Force lady. You're under arrest. And they also changed the story from the comics by making the Skrulls refugees and lovable allies. You never know when you're gonna need to borrow some sugar. Which, you know what? Fine, also cool. This gives us a chance to tell a story about the consequences of war, a refugee crisis, and the danger of othering people who look different from you. That's topical, so topical. Right, but then they kind of wasted those concepts by not really singling them out as the central focus of the story, but you know what, whatever. Now, Captain Marvel is the first example where I think it's clear that there was not really a plan for these cosmic stories the whole time. If the Skrulls had like been part of S.H.I.E.L.D. since 1995, then I think they would have been teased or at least addressed somewhat when Hydra took over in Winter Soldier. But there were also like legal rights issues to the scrolls that were complicated. Fox also had the rights to the concept of scrolls. So like maybe Marvel thought it best to not actually include them. And you know, in case it like confused some people like the multiple Quicksilvers. Anyways, Carol ends that movie leaving with the scrolls and then she stays in space until Fury summons her home in the Infinity War post credit scene. And we've also seen that the scrolls were working with Fury and Far From Home, which sets up the fact that he's been on vacation in space. Got my shoes. 
Now, this establishes that Fury has been off world, but it makes it seem like he's just chilling. Not that he is the super depressed failure that we saw in Secret Invasion. Now look, Secret Invasion does make no sense. And frankly, I, I really hope it takes place in an alternate reality. In that show, we learned that Fury didn't actually find the Skrulls a home, but he did recruit them to work for him as spies. You pimped us, Fury! And this apparently caused resentment among some Skrulls, but the show never tells us why. Did Fury lie to them? Was he using them? It's never really clear. But Secret Invasion also had this very cheaply shot dialogue scene where Talos mentions a Skrull colony. Every Skrull that isn't in Emperor George's colony. Oh, okay, so they found the Skrulls a planet. Apparently, and you know, when you're watching the show, given the context of the show with the Skrulls wanting to take over Earth and stuff, I think you can safely assume that this new Skrull colony must really suck. I mean, the Emperor has to be a tyrant. Personally, I picture like an inhospitable planet like Mustafar or Apocalypse. Otherwise, why would all the Skrulls on Earth want to overthrow the Earth governments and live there? They had to have had a really crappy world and they want a better one, Earth. But then in the Marvels, we see that this new Skrull world is actually quite nice. Blue skies, clean houses. The Emperor seems like a real cool guy. Made refugees wherever we go and still we came into these negotiations in good faith. Hell, they're even at peace with the Kree at the start of the movie. So in Secret Invasion, Fury is apparently all depressed about his failure to protect the Earth. But ultimately, he was right. I mean, he brought the Avengers together and eventually they reformed and brought back half the universe. So it's not even clear why Fury's upset. And far from home, Talos tells Fury. And so we need you to come back because everyone kept asking me where the Avengers are. So from that, we get that Fury has been delegating his responsibilities and not reforming the Avengers. But none of this actually has anything to do with the Skrulls not finding a home. And I think what we're seeing here is that when they made Far From Home, they said, okay, so definitely Fury's going to be in space. So do a post credit scene where he's in space. But they didn't necessarily have it worked out that he was going to be depressed or blaming himself, just that he was taking time off and he was with the Skrulls. But the problem is we see this all throughout these cosmic stories. Instead of having a plan for a character arc, they just kind of slot these characters in wherever they want in a way that doesn't make sense from project to project. For instance, in Secret Invasion, Fury blames himself for Gravik's actions because he failed to find the Skrulls as a home. But in the Marvels, we saw they're doing great. So it makes me feel like that there was a reason the Skrulls were mad at Fury that they cut from the show. Like maybe Fury outright lied to the Skrulls, but Marvel wanted to keep him seeming heroic, so they just cut that part out of the show. So what's really going on here, though, is that when Marvel hinted at Fury being in space, they didn't have Secret Invasion mapped out. Like at Marvel Studios, creators are often siloed and don't really know what's happening on other projects. Probably the most famous example that's public at this point is Multiverse of Madness and WandaVision. So multiverse screenwriter writer Michael Waldron and director Sam Raimi never watched WandaVision or read the scripts. They kind of got the gist from certain executives at Marvel on what was happening. And that explains why Wanda's character is so like abruptly evil at the start of Multiverse of Madness after she found redemption at the end of WandaVision. So looking at Secret Invasion and the Marvels, it seems like Nia DaCosta and the showrunners for Secret Invasion were never actually in the same room together and that Marvel Studios did what they do best. They changed their mind multiple times throughout production. Like Secret Invasion ends with Gravik's Rebellion being put down and the scrolls exposed and the president calling open season on aliens. But none of those events are mentioned at all in the Marvels. In fact, Fury is back to being a happy-go-lucky and wifeless guy in the movie. And when Valkyrie shows up to take scroll refugees to Earth, it's not mentioned that, hey, Earth is like the least safe place for your kind right now. Be really careful. Also, in the Marvels, we see that S.W.O.R.D. is a bustling space station filled with resources and loyalists who could have helped Fury track down these rogue scrolls in Secret Invasion. And worst of all, in the Marvels, we hear about Carol destroying the Supreme Intelligence in the mid-90s, and we hear about a massive civil war. This probably caused the weakened Kree Empire to eventually surrender to Xandar, pissing off warlords like Ronan, but guys, that all sounds like it would have been a really interesting movie, doesn't it? Like, look, if you were going to sit down and map out these stories in a coherent, linear way, imagine if I told you, that the actions of a single superhero would cause a war that would kill millions of people. Isn't that a fascinating character portrait that you'd want to see play out on screen? Could you imagine how a great director like Nia DaCosta could have really sunk her teeth into a premise like that? But we didn't get that because Marvel never planned out the whole cosmic story. Every creator had too little control or too much control and executives kept changing their minds. They kept hinting at these larger stories without ever actually getting around to telling that story. Like, let me give you an idea of how this story could have played out if it had been planned. So at the start of the MCU, 
most of the universe is being decimated in this kree scroll war. Now, there are some neutral pockets, like the worlds controlled by the High Evolutionary and the Nine Realms. And this also explains why all these advanced species leave Earth alone. It's under Odin's protection, and you don't mess with Asgard. They all have super strength, and they can teleport anywhere in the universe. And actually, this would also explain why Thanos launched a proxy invasion of Earth using an Asgardian. He didn't want to incur Odin's wrath. So, Carol Danvers joining Star Force ends up giving the Kree the edge in the war, and they start to exterminate the Skrulls, which, by the way, should have all been in the movie. After the events of Captain Marvel, Carol and Fury find the Skrulls a new home pretty quickly because the universe is massive and filled with planets. And then, in Captain Marvel 2, the movie should have begun with a big fight sequence where Carol destroys the Supreme Intelligence. Maybe you even show Carol as the villain during this with like creepy glowing eyes like we saw in the flashback in the movie, and then it's revealed that this was a Kree telling this story to their kids, showing how Carol has actually unintentionally become a villain. So that movie could have been about the Kree Civil War, which also makes it kind of a prequel to Guardians of the Galaxy. Warlords like Ronan break away from the Empire and begin to terrorize people. Meanwhile, the son of the Dead Scroll Emperor would come out of hiding and claim his throne on this new Skrullos planet. He's a young, cocky guy who wants revenge on the Kree for destroying his family. So the Skrulls slowly start to take over Kree weapons and Kree worlds that have been abandoned or weakened by the Civil War. And this chaos allows terrorists like Thanos to rise to power, again, which would have connected all these cosmic stories together. So Carol would have had to have spent her second movie in a situation she couldn't punch her way out of, trying to create a stable peace among worlds. I told them it means peace among worlds. How hilarious is that? And then Carol would fail. She would see the limits of her powers. Everything Carol fought for would turn to dust. Maybe she eventually has to help recreate the Supreme Intelligence so there could be some kind of end to the chaos. And then I would have ended Captain Marvel 2 with the snap and Carol getting a page from Fury, connecting it to Infinity War, and bringing everybody up to current day. And look, not every scroll would be evil. Some of them flee from their emperor and agree to stay on Earth to help Fury. But during the blip, scrolls loyal to the emperor would come to Earth to slowly take people's places. Then, Secret Invasion could have actually been the plot of the evil scroll emperor who was trying to take over Earth. He could have seen it even maybe as repaying Earth by bringing them into the glory of the scroll empire. And that should have also been an Avengers movie like we've talked about in these videos. And then, Captain Marvel 3 could have seen her reluctantly join up with Kamala and Monica present day to fix all of Carol's mistakes, neutralize the Skrull Empire, and then finally bring her story full circle. Yeah, but how would she do that? Well, I think that Captain Marvel 3, or even the last movie if you want to compress everything, should have introduced the Hulkling. In the comics, Hulkling is the son of Marvel and a Skrull princess, but he was raised on Earth and eventually became a young Avenger. Now, he's a very important character because he's the bridge between these two worlds. He could be considered royalty of both ruling houses. Maybe in the MCU, Marvel originally agreed to help the Skrulls because she fell in love with a member of Skrull royalty and had their child. So this baby, the Hulkling, would have had a claim to the throne of the Skrulls, so they would have kept it hidden on Earth for years. Or maybe by the end of the movie, the Kree and the Skrulls agreed that he should be raised on a neutral planet, Earth. And look, if Kamala was in the same movie as Hulkling, it would set Hulkling up to be a young Avenger, the group that she is now forming in the MCU. I'm putting together a team, and I want you on it. So that's one way this could have played out with like a consistent plan using a grand cosmic epic to tell personal character driven stories. But like that's now all a giant what if because they're never going to go back and remake those stories. So now let's talk about what they can still do in the future. Phases five and six are like mostly set in stone. They're going to be telling the story of the multiverse saga leading up to probably Avengers versus X-Men and Avengers Secret Wars. And if Secret Wars follows the comics, it will end with a soft reboot of the cinematic universe, making it easier to onboard new fans who work weren't even born when the first Iron Man was released. So what we're seeing now is like cosmic stories are taking a backseat to the multiverse stories. Like Monica ends up in a different universe and not say in a Kree holding cell or something. And I think that the entire multiverse saga has all been about bringing the X-Men into the MCU. So phases seven through nine will be the mutant saga, which has a major cosmic element to it. In the comics and the animated series, the X-Men become embroiled with an empire called the Shi'ar. Charles Xavier actually falls in love with the Shi'ar Empress and lives with her in space. And there's also the Phoenix Force, this unstoppable force of cosmic destruction that attaches itself to an X-Man, Jean Grey. And following this Secret Wars reboot, Marvel can actually roll back some of their bad decisions. They can establish a new continuity where the heroes are all mostly the same, but like the status quo is a little different. Maybe in this reset universe, the Kree and the Skrulls are still at war. Hell, maybe they can actually pull off a comic accurate large scale secret invasion movie. I mean, after all, they made Dark Phoenix twice, three times if you count WandaVision, so why not remake Secret Invasion? Or they could completely keep the current continuity 
continuity, but wipe everything clean with the Annihilation Wave. Er, what's that? Well, that was this massive event from the comics where a bug emperor named Annihilus decimated thousands of worlds. And in the next saga, this would cause all the various cosmic worlds to unite, maybe sending a representative from each planet to join a new team of space-faring heroes. Uh... Go! Like I said, guys, the comics are filled with like 60 years of history to pull from. The Marvel Studios could adapt any of these stories and tell a grand epic saga. And I don't think that Marvel should plan out every detail for their stories. Brilliant filmmakers like James Gunn need to have creative freedom to tell their own character-driven tales. But creating an overall framework for these creators to work within can actually enhance their storytelling. Phases two and three work so well because Marvel knew where their characters are going to begin and end with those stories. And then they gave the creatives the freedom to tell honest, character-driven narratives that made us fall in love with moments like this. Assemble. No! Well, guys, that's just my thoughts on where Marvel sits with the Cosmic Universe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe and smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy. <laughs>